Hey! Uh, today I'm going to be making some cups. Uh, so I'm going to be making this butterfly cup, uh, like this. This is one that I've painted with underglaze. And this is one that hasn't been painted. I'm actually going to fire these to bisque, to be bisque and then use some other uh, different types of glazes on it. So I'm really excited to experiment. So to start off, I have my clay that can be fired to, it's a stoneware. Uh, it can be fired to cone six or 06. And um, I start with a slab. So I'm just gonna cut myself a little bit of clay. I use my cool wire tool to get my clay. That way I'm not scraping it off the pump with, a, uh, with my fingers. So I just slide across. It's like, it's like, like if you've ever worked in baking, um, ever baked before, you'll notice that pottery is actually very similar to baking. And I think you can use wire tools similar to that in baking as well. So I have a nice little bit of clay. This is a tone from leftover from last night. So I'm gonna incorporate that into this piece that I just cut. Um, I may not need all of this. So I'm gonna break this in half. So to incorporate it into the clay, I just kind of smush. <laughs> and I like to roll my clay. It's just, you're kneading it essentially and getting all the air bubbles out of it. So it's very similar to baking. Like I said, if you've ever kneaded dough, this is very similar. And you're doing the same things. You're getting the air pockets out. And air pocket, it's important to get air pockets out because whenever clay, if a piece has an air pocket into it, in it and it goes into the kiln, then that piece will explode. So now I've got my clay nice and kneaded. I can knead it a little bit more because I'm scared. I don't want any air pockets. So now that I've got it nice and kneaded, I can kind of start flattening it out a little bit. And do that with the palm of my hand like this and just kind of flatten it out in a rolling motion. Now I've got my rolling pen and I'm going to roll a slab. Some people use guide bars or pieces of wood to make sure they're rolling out a nice and even slabs each time. I just kind of go by eye. And the more you work with clay, the more proficient you become. So obviously I've gotten, a, I'm pretty adept at rolling slabs now. <laughs> I find you can make cups using coils as well, but I find the slabs to be a little easier on my joints. And so with rolling coils, you'll see later, we will roll one for this mug. Uses a lot more of like of your hands. So I can stand up and really get this, add pressure as I'm rolling. I'm gonna roll from different directions. Really add pressure as you're rolling to smooth that, we get that clay as thin as you'd like. I'm trying to level my surface as well, so I don't have one area thicker than the other. Nice. 
This feels a little thick right here. So I'm just gonna roll that again. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna smooth my surface out with my rubber rib. Some people, me <laughs> Some people measure things perfectly and I just do not. I have dyscalculia, so it, it would, it's kind of hard for me to take a measurement and then keep it in my head and get it right. So I just don't generally measure, but I do still use a ruler. So <laughs> I take my ruler and I'm gonna make a rectangle out of this slab that I just rolled. So I'm gonna take my ruler and create two horizontal lines. And these are gonna be the body of my cup. Cup. Find my tools that I'm looking for real quick in my little toolbox. I'm actually using, this is pretty cool, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm using a old miner's lunchbox as my toolbox. And I like it because it's metal. Pottery is really dirty. <laughs> so the metal toolbox I find, I don't have to worry about the dust that's in it, you know. Okay. Looking for my knife. My best friend got me this knife and you'll find as you make pottery, um, you kind of accrue tools slowly over time. And I've been, I've been making pottery since 2013. Um, I took a break after I graduated college. So I've been back at it again for two years. So I would say all together I'd make been making pottery for about four to five years. So not like extremely long, but long enough to know where I feel comfortable and I feel like I found my style as a potter. And I definitely am fond of hand building. I like hand building because I can do, anyone can do this, I can do this. And um, my hands are really unstable. My joints hurt often. And I find that the way that I go about building things, um, it's not it's not too stressful on my hands. So this is why I make slab mugs. And plus I can get the, uh, the, the walls really thin. So I'll start off with making two horizontal lines. And I kind of use my cut that I made last <laughs> as a measurement tool. <laughs> so I know, okay, I want my, walls to be this tall. So I take my cup and just kind of put, place it on my surface and I say, okay, this is gonna be my top. This is gonna be my bottom. Yeah. So now I'm gonna take my ruler and make very straight lines going across two horizontal lines parallel to one another. And they are I'll, I'll actually measure. <laughs> How big are they? It's about a three inch tall cut. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. It's a three inch tall cut. That's not so hard. So I'll say, okay, this is three inches from the top over here. This is three inches from the top right here. Now that I've got my 
my top made, I can go ahead and make the base, just that circle up for the bottom. So to draw my circle for this cup, my base for this cup, I actually use a sponge. See, the sponge is the same size as the bottom. And this is another like a workaround for me <laughs> using math. Uh, it's a different type of that. It's geometry. So <laughs> I am, um, you can see I have my line, my wall drawn. And now I'm going to make my circle. So I place my sponge down and I use this tool just to draw a line around it. It's kind of like my pencil and pottery. I find anyway. Okay, now I've got my circle drawn. Now I can cut these shapes out. And then I'll just take that excess clay and I wanna make sure I get it back into a ball or something <laughs> that I can put back into my clay box and save it for later. If you leave it, if you leave these pieces out while you're working, they'll dry up and then you'll waste all of your clay. So I like to conserve my resources. So I just cut my circle out when you're cutting into clay, it's really helpful to hold your knife straight in like that, which is kind of weird. You don't want to hold it that like it doesn't feel natural. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my two pieces, my wall, well, my circle, my base, and then the wall the butt for the body of my cup. And you can see that this looks like it's kind of big and I do that on purpose. Um, because again, I can say, can save the clay. So I'm going to put the, work this clay back into a ball, the excess, and just put it back into my clay box, back into the bag. And I keep my clay in an airtight Tupperware container under my desk. So I just put it in the bag, close the bag head, and put the lid on. See, this clay is kind of, it's thick right here and it gets thinner. So I'd like the whole piece to be about this thin. So I'm gonna take the small, ro small roller and just roll over the surface. This is the coolest little tool. I love this roller. And I don't use it for anything but pottery. I have other rollers that I'll use for when I'm painting or print doing printmaking. This is just for pottery. And you can get tools like this online or in your local pottery store. Okay, it's about as thin as I'd like it. My base is a little thick too, so I'm gonna roll that as well. And that changes the size of everything, but what I'll do is I'll just trim and save the excess. I would rather have more clay than not enough clay. So now you can see this circle is about as thin as our walls are now, but it's much larger than the sponge. So I'm just gonna place the sponge back on top of it 
and use my pencil tool There we go. So I'm gonna trim that excess off. So what I did was I laid my sponge back on top of this slab and then traced the outline because I know that's about as big as I want my cup's base to be. I don't want it to be bigger. And I just cut it out. It doesn't have to be an exact perfect circle. People will probably tell you that it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> So um, mine's a little of a bit of a wonky circle and that's okay and you'll see why later. So I have my clay rolled out nice and thin. Now I need to know how big, how, how much of this clay do I need to trim? First I'm gonna start with the horizontal, the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna use my ruler again and just hold it to that edge because you can see it's kind of bowed out. It's not flat or straight. So I'm just gonna place my ruler down, not take to, trying to keep preserve as much of my wall as I can because I do want my, these mugs to be right at three inches tall. So I trim that bottom piece and the top looks pretty even. It has a little bit of excess on this right side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler back over here. And just trim the excess. Now I know this is more than what I need and it's a little thick still. So I'm gonna roll it out again, but I'm gonna try and see how much of this I need. I'm gonna cut some off. I think that would be good. That'll be good. And see if this fits. So I just put it on top of my base. and it still is a little too big. So I'm just gonna trim that excess off now. Uh, I have it lined up around, you can see. I know where to cut. I wanna have a little bit of overhang. My knife goes in at an angle. There we go. So now it lines up much nicer on the cup, on the cup space. can see. That looks rather nice, but again, my walls are really thick still, so I'm gonna roll them out again. I'm gonna take my excess clay, put it back into a ball and put it back into my clay box. this again see if it's about three inches it is so that's perfect I don't need to trim anymore this side is so thick on this right side so I'm gonna roll the opposite way aha there we go okay I'm gonna have to trim
a lot of trimming. But I want this cut to be very, um, I want it to match the others that I've made. So I need it to be the right size in order to do that. Just smoothing out my bottom a little bit. Okay. Now I take this wall and I place it on my bottom. Just wanna see how it lines up and if I need to trim anything. And I do, because <laughs> I rolled it again. Anytime you roll it, it, it you know, it gets thinner but it gets longer too. So you have to be really con uh, conscious of that and remember because if you have clay, if this clay, like if well, the reason why I'm trimming it and only allowing like, I'm gonna trim this even more, honestly. I, I don't want, I want there to be an overlap of the two sides, but I don't want it to be too much because when, when you get into really thick clay, you can risk your pot exploding in the kiln. And I don't want that, so. There we go. This looks like it got a little thicker right there. So I'm just gonna trim that. There we go. So obviously measuring <laughs> would help um, with reducing the amount of trimming and stuff that you do, but I don't really have a problem with it. I work by myself and for myself, so I'm gonna do what's easiest for me. <laughs> it may not be easy for you and your setup to waste clay like that, but I don't actually waste the clay, so. Okay, I trimmed a little bit off. Now I'm going to, because I have a sheet of canvas underneath my clay, it actually creates a pattern on the clay's surface. You can't really, you can kind of see that there's texture sort of on this clay surface, whereas this one's smooth. This side has a texture, this one's smooth. <laughs> So I'm going to smooth up, smooth the texture off. And so it basically just has the canvas pattern on it. And so I've smoothed the top, smoothed my bot, smooth the inside of my wall. And now I'm going to be using a butterfly stencil to create the butterfly pattern. So this is a metal stencil. So what I do is, I know this clay will fit on my, Bait on the base of my cup now. I'm not worried about that any longer. And while we're sitting here, the clay is getting harder and drying, which is all which is all good things when you're building with a slab, building using slabs. You don't want it to dry completely, but you do want it to be a little bit hard and stiff so that it can hold itself up and not fall or collapse. So I'm gonna take this little butterfly stencil, apply it to my surface, and come back with my favorite tool, a little rolling pin. <laughs> so I'm just gonna roll over the surface. Not too hard because I don't want my clay to be get thinner because it's already thin, as thin as I want it. And there you go. So now my butterfly has kind of disappeared. I'm gonna, so now I'm going to repeat that process, leaving a little bit of space in between my butterflies. 
because where the in between the butterflies is where the handle will go. I feel like this one is a little, it's fine. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's gonna be great. Yeah, so this, okay. I'm just gonna use my, rule, my little roller, rolling pen again. Remembering not to go too thin. I mean, get, not to press too hard so my clay doesn't get thinner. And gently roll over the surface where the stencil is. Okay, now I'm gonna take my knife, place it between the stencil and the clay and lift up. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to lift the stencil off the clay. So now I have two butterfly patterns. Okay, now that I have my butterflies on there, I can start, I have to smooth this side out again. It has that texture on it. So I'm gonna smooth it real quickly and gently so I don't disturb the butterfly patterns on the opposite side. Okay, now I'm gonna take my scoring tool. It's like a little, this is, they're, those are metal, strands of metal at the end. So like, eek, eek. you can create texture in your clay using this, but I like to use it to score. Um, I have a larger one like this. It's pretty cool. So you can see it has like little individual metal strands and you just pass that over your clay and you score it. So there's this thing called scoring when you're using clay. Let's score the bottom of this first. So I'm, we're, since we're connecting this clay to these two pieces together, you have to do something called scoring and slipping. And scoring and slipping is you're basically just scoring, you're taking something and scratching into the surface of the clay in kind of a tic-tac-toe pattern or like the hashtag. <laughs> you're making hashtags across the clay. Yeah, um, uh, so you're going to score where the clay bodies, the clays meet together, the clay pieces meet. You're going to score where the clay meets, like where the wall and the base meet one another. And um, so I'm gonna take this little tool and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move this camera maybe, no. Take this tool and you can see I'm just gonna drag it across the surface. And then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction, all the way around, because this is where the walls will meet. The wall will meet the base. There we go. So now it's nice and scored. I can just push the spot where it belongs. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the wall. To the window! So I'm going to score the bottom piece at the bottom of my wall and the sides of my wall. So I'm gonna make sure my wall sides are cut at an angle to one another. gonna take this tool, drag it across the bottom. There we 
go. Now I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. nice and scored. Now I'm going to do the same to the sides. Oh wait. I wanted to do this in a specific way. I hope I did it right. Nope. Did not. This side is going to be my top because it has less space than on this side. So this will be my bottom. So I'm gonna score this side and this side of my clay. So I'm just gonna do the same thing as I did on the bottom, drag my Pull across in the hashtag pattern. And then I'm gonna flip my clay over and do this part on the top. So it's kind of like Velcro, you're creating, you're scoring it so that the clay connects better to the surface and then so now we have our clay scored that little rib right there I can get a paintbrush this will work Wet it a little bit and then drag it across wherever I've scored. So this is called slipping. There we're scoring and slipping. So I'm gonna drag it across the bottom on my wall. My wall still feels a little too, like I find this to be a little too wet to connect, so I'm gonna wait a little bit before I actually do this. So I'll come back in a second. Okay, my clay's good and like it feels about, it's not quite leather hard, but it's like, it still feels like it's still wet enough where it'll take a curve, but it should be able to support itself standing up which it will have to do for a little bit. So I'm just gonna take my clay and place it on top of my base. And it looks like I'm gonna have to trim a little bit and I might lose some of my butterfly, so I'm gonna try and fix that by trimming this side. I'm gonna lose the butterflies. So I'm gonna cut this piece off and see what happens. That looks good. I'm gonna lose a little bit of my butterfly, but you'll see I'll be able to get it back. I 
I was kind of worried that this would happen because I, ha I do have them spaced a little bit far apart, but I figured it out in like the last few cups that I've made like this that I can just recreate the butterfly, like the parts that do kind of disappear when I make this attached like connection. So I'm gonna re-slip. I'm gonna score this again. this again. Okay, we should be good to make this connection now. So keep them in mind which piece is your top and which piece is your bottom. Just go ahead and attack, make that, those connections. And just, I'm gonna slip this again. Cause I had a score, this little piece right here. And then I kinda take my fingers and press these two sides together. I can't do it the whole way with my hand. I need a tool. One of my favorite tools is this one, but I'm looking for a smaller one, this one. So you can see it's just a little wood tool with a curve at both ends. So I can take that. This looks a little taller. It is a little taller. So I'm probably gonna trim that once I get it all secured on the bottom. So to secure it on the bottom, you take this, and just kind of pull up a little bit, just real gently. I'm gonna take it and go along the bottom, on the inside of the bottom.
I'm gonna take this tool and just kind of work along the bottom where they meet, where the wall and the base meet, and smooth over the crack. And then I'm gonna take this tool and gently, not as gently, it's kind of a kind of rough, to, you're using a little bit of force when you're going over the seam where the walls meet. But it's important to do that because you don't want any air pockets. So I'm just kind of going over where the walls meet at and smoothing that connection out and making sure that there's no air between the two. I'm losing a little bit of my butterflies in this process, but we're gonna go back and draw them back in, or I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go back and draw them in. not worry too much about refining stuff right now. I want my cup to sort of take, get a little firmer before I start perfecting everything, but I am gonna trim it because it's a little taller than what I like. Just a little smidge of a trim, barely anything. So I'm gonna take my knife and
Yeah, so now it's about the same size as my other mug, three inches. I'm gonna take my rib and kind of smooth out some spots along the bottom. I don't want the clay to dry too thick or in a weird tech with a weird texture. So I like to smooth the surface of the cup some. I'm gonna do this a lot more on this mug before I finish. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna be making a coil to go inside the bottom. So I need a little bit more clay than what I have in my hand. So I'm gonna go back into my clay box and I'm gonna use from the pieces that I threw back in here earlier. So again, I'm just going to knead the clay. We're going to form a coil or Okay. I'm going to get my dust by surface off. fingers just a tiny 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 bit wet not really much at all and then you're gonna place your hands like this on the top of your little ball of clay and start rolling using your fingertips not the palm of your hand and as you roll you start to push out like this eventually but you've got you have to put a good bit of pressure to get that roll started <laughs> and just keep going and this is it's a little hard on me to do this that I start having pain going up my arms so <laughs> I don't like to roll coils but they're necessary, so I do it as less as possible. This is way too thick. I'm gonna take this, ooh, that's nice coil. Nice start to a coil. I'm gonna take that and just keep rolling. trim it again because I don't need it that that much more and um would like it to be a little smaller than what it is right now so I'm gonna keep rolling Good 
good exercise. Pottery is good upper body exercise. Okay, now I've got my coil. So it's just a tube and I can see how it fits on the inside. This should be about right. So whenever you cut a coil, see how now my pieces are cut like at an angle to one another? Boop. Wow, they fit into a circle perfectly. <laughs> There's some things that I'm not explaining and I'm sorry, but it's, I feel like if I had another person here filming, it might be easier to show you guys some stuff. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So I'm scoring the inside of my cup now where I'm gonna place this coil. I'm placing it where at the seam where the bottom and the walls meet. So I'm scoring a bit of the walls and scoring a bit of the bottom. Then I'm gonna score my coil. I'm just scoring the bottom of my coil and the ends of my coil where my coil meets and forms a circle and then where it's going to meet on the bottom of my cup. Now I'm going to slip, score and slip. So I'm just gonna put some slip onto my coil um, put some slip into the bottom of my cup. I'm gonna run my paint, my brush around the top of my cup. The seed saw some stuff I wanted to fix real quickly. <laughs> okay, now I'm just gonna drop my coil down and I might have to trim a little bit off of it. There we go. And then I'm gonna take this tool and kind of help guide it down to the bottom. So it looks like this now. My coil is in the bottom. So now I'm going to take this tool. And, oop, not dent the rim. Take this tool. And kind of push the coil into the cup. I, like I said, I don't have another person in here filming for me to show you guys this really, or do it justice. I guess I could wear, I do have a GoPro. I could totally wear a GoPro for stuff like this and that would probably give you guys great footage. So maybe next time. Sorry. I'm doing my best. This is actually the first time that I've done a, like a tutorial type video. 
like a serious one. I've done little videos of me glazing before and with audio, but this is the first time that I'm actually going over the steps as I'm making. I'm able to do that because I don't have as many fans on right now, so you can hear my voice. It's overcast right now. It's not that hot in here, so well, I can get by with just the overhead fans. I have quite a bit of fans in here. So you just want to smooth that coil in and you want the bottom of your cup, you want your cups to look clean, you know? So the bottom of your cup, you want it to be smooth. I have another tool that I really like. My cup made my coil is nice and smooth on the inside. It's trimmed down to the size I'd like. Everything looks pretty good. I'm going to attach a handle. And to attach a handle first, I have to pull a handle. So to pull a handle, you start with a ball of clay. So I'm just going to look in my bag for a piece from earlier or that I've used recently. This would be great to pull a handle from. Pretty sure anyway, so I'm just gonna roll it a little bit. So it's a shape that I can grip and you wet your hand and you grab and pull. Um, since this is a relatively small cup, I'm just going to use two like the, my forefinger and my thumb to pull it, not my whole hand. Oops. Well, I'm gonna start using my whole hand because I've got to pull from this base, which is like, and pull it up. Now I can start making my little curve. Now I can, I have a curve. It's kind of a little thick at the end. So I'm gonna wet my hands just a little bit more, get some of the clay off. And just use my forefinger and my thumb to pull it a little like in the direction that I want.
and you just keep pulling and refining that shape until you get something that it says you know aesthetically pleasing to you I think I've got it. So I like that. So I'll make my cut a right, right around here at an angle. All right, I've got a nice little handle. See how that attaches. I can line it up and I see that, that looks rather nice. So I'm going to do the same, it's the same process. Anytime you attach clay, uh, you have to score and slip. So pick up my little mask there, close up my clay box. I scored the cup where the handle is going to go and I scored the handle itself. 
Again, you're just using a hashtag or tic-tac-toe pattern. So you can see I scored the edges. Now I can apply a, the slip. And then just attach my handle. I can take this little tool. Again, it's this little small. And where it meets, I can just kind of press it down. And I do that to the base. I'm just gonna take my finger and smooth that out. Take this tool <clears throat> this tool almost messed myself up. And just kind of go over those seams gently. Just going back and smoothing out the bottom of my cup and the inside walls. I want it to look as smooth as possible. Like as if it were done on the wheel. But I don't mind not having a wheel. I think that I prefer hand building. There's just so much more personal, it, like you can, it feels like it has so a much more personal touch, even though like you are still building with your hands on the wheel. So I'm just doing the finishing deep, like details off on my cup, but we're pretty much done. I found my butterfly stencil on eBay. I found a lot of stuff on eBay. I found the toolbox for, for the lunchbox that I keep my tools in. 
I found that on eBay. Well, I found several, so I have quite a few. There we go, third butterfly cut.